Well, they're labels that no one wants, even if he or she deserves it. But what about people who don't deserve it at all? Thousands of parents who have been branded molesters by their adult children claim they have been falsely accused. And they blame the therapy that their children underwent. CNN special assignment reporter Kathy Slobogan examines that therapy in this report. She said it started around five years old. I supposedly drugged her mother so that uh, I could take her out of the house at one or two o'clock in the morning and abuse her. The family's been ruined, but my daughter's been ruined more. She's lost her childhood. She's lost her parents. She's lost her aunts and uncles. You know, everyone. Four years ago, Liz and Roger LaPlante's world was shattered. Their 33-year-old daughter told them that Roger had sexually abused her in bizarre satanic rituals. I made her murder three babies, and she saw me murder so many she lost track. It, it just didn't happen. It, the only one that abused my daughter, I think, was their counselors. Roger LaPlante denies the abuse. He's passed a lie detector test supporting his position. There are no legal charges. But his daughter, who's not responded to an interview request, still believes her father's guilty because of memories she recovered during therapy. Memories she believes were repressed for nearly 30 years. We are presumed guilty, that's it. There is, no, there is no defense in a case like this. The system doesn't work for people like us. As we were accused, tried, convicted, and hung, sentenced without ever meeting anybody and even knowing it was happening. The LaPlantes now have no contact with their daughter. And I assume that you're either uh, falsely accused or very artful liars, uh, one of the two. They've joined a support group of other parents who say they've been falsely accused. Accused by children in their 30s and 40s who didn't remember the abuse until they went to a therapist. There are now more than 3,000 of these families. We didn't spend our lives raising our children and taking care of them for this to happen in, in the ages we're in now. We planned on spending time with our grandchildren, taking them on trips, um, They've taken our future away, is what's happened here. They've taken our daughter, who, who, I mean, how do you describe a daughter? A daughter is love and caring, and um, they've, they've just destroyed that. They've just kind of come in our life and uh, laid this at our feet, but I was a child molester. Chuck Noah is a man determined to clear his name. A father of five, grandfather to 10, he, too, is a parent accused by his daughter of sexual abuse. I just don't want my little children uh, saying Grandpa was a pedophile. I will not stand for it. Chuck Noah has become a one-man crusade against the therapists he feels have brainwashed his daughter and others. Two years ago, at the age of 33, she accused him of sexually abusing her when she was six years old. She says she remembered the abuse in therapy. It all starts with therapy. It all starts with therapist. She said, it, this is so awful that I have to call my therapist uh, periodically to, to be sure it's true. The Noahs raised four other daughters. All of them say the sexual abuse of their sister never happened. We just know it's not true, and our dad did not do this. There were five girls in a bedroom. Um, my mom didn't work, and we di she didn't have a car, and so... Um, I don't know, she doesn't explain a lot of it, but all of it is news to us. Chuck Noah has also passed a lie detector test, but it's made no difference to his daughter or her therapist. They both refuse to be interviewed on camera. The Noah's daughter no longer sees them or comes to family get-togethers. Jean was the closest to her sister. Yeah, I was shocked. What's it done to you? No. All our friends used to say, how'd you raise this fine girl? What'd you do? All of a sudden, they're, they're acting like we would, we would allow little babies to be hurt and all these things. These families are the underside of the crusade to save children from sexual abuse. For too long, child abuse was ignored and victims weren't believed. But now the pendulum may have swung the other way. Within the therapeutic community itself, there are fears that a significant number of therapists trained to work with incest victims may see sexual abuse where it doesn't exist. 
that in their zeal to uncover abuse, they may be inducing so-called repressed memories in vulnerable patients, memories which may be false. The theory behind repressed memory is that small children who are abused bury the memories because they're so traumatic. To get at those memories, therapists use techniques like hypnosis or getting the patient to imagine abuse that might have happened. And there are books, like The Courage to Heal, the Bible of the repressed memory movement. It says things like, if you don't remember your abuse, you're not alone. Or, if you think you were abused and your life shows the symptoms, then you were. Keep going with it. She's got a hold of him. You're doing great. There are many patients who believe in their memories, believe they are the key to their recovery. I feel too disgusting. I can't believe that I met her when, when someone hurts me. This is an incest survivor's therapy group. Linda is symbolically confronting her father for abusing her, abuse she did not remember until she was 33, and which her father denies. I didn't deserve it. I don't want you ever touch me again. <laughs> ever. Good. Say that again. <laughs> Did you ever, ever touch me? <laughs> great, great. Keep going. Repressed memory again, therapy Linda. is one of the know, fastest growing trends in the mental health <laughs> field. Many therapists who work in this area say false well, memories are rare. The number of cases what, that I've seen where the memories are false are very, very, very few. Psychologist Renee Fredrickson is a leader in repressed memory work. I know there's a group that would like to believe and purports to believe that this problem is caused by therapists misattributing authenticity. And I wish that were true, but it, it hasn't been what I've seen. There are far more sexual predators than there are bad therapists. The therapeutic community itself has difficulty overseeing what goes on inside the privacy of a therapist's office. The question whether some therapists are leading patients towards memories is a sensitive one and difficult to prove. Because such a large number of families have been wrenched apart through this process, we decided to go into therapy undercover. Before taking that step, CNN consulted a psychologist with extensive expertise in this area. We asked him to help us define symptoms for our undercover producer, which would not necessarily point to child abuse. Basically, I've just been kind of depressed. Um, I guess it started about eight months ago. Our CNN and, uh, producer took a hidden camera to tape this therapist you know, whose identity we decided not to reveal. But she's typical of the type of therapist causing concern. She has counseled at least six people we know of who went to her for other reasons and came out accusing their parents of sexual abuse. The words here are her own, but we've substituted another voice. You mean your sexual intimacy? Yeah. Our producer said her depression had affected her marriage and lessened her interest in sex. She discussed her family history, and the therapist asked about childhood memories. At the end of the very first session, the therapist suggested a diagnosis. It seems to me that you have the symptoms of someone who could have experienced some sexual trauma. Our producer never suggested she had been sexually abused and said she had no memory of it. Do you get many women like this? Many, many. And they forget? Yes, yes, they forget. They have no idea. In fact, I mean, what you've presented to me, Leanne, is so classic that I'm just sitting here blown away, actually. The therapist then told our producer to read a book about repressed memories. It didn't seem like me. In a second but session, our producer expressed way. strong doubts about the possibility of abuse. Know, the therapist really didn't force it, but she went on to describe how repressed memory works. I mean, if something bad happened to you, I would think that you'd remember it. You're right. You're right. If something bad happens, you really remember it. But if something too bad happens to you, so bad that you can't cope with it, you forget it. In the last year or two, it has become a major theme amongst therapists and uh, a large number of patients uh, uh, and families have been drawn into this uh, uh, pseudo-memory and false memory business. Dr. Paul McHugh is chief of psychiatry at Johns Hopkins Medical School and a critic of repressed memory techniques. A, a witch hunt uh, 
essentially identical in all of its forms to the Salem uh, witch craze is occurring in our country now and needs to, needs to be stopped both to protect people, get people proper therapy, and to sustain the trust of our public in psychotherapy and psychiatrists. Can a child forget sustained sexual abuse? No. In our uh, work here, in which we have proof that they were uh, systematically abused, we, uh, th they remember. Dr. McHugh is not alone. Memory researchers like Elizabeth Loftus have grave doubts about the validity of repressed memories. False memories can sound very, very real. Loftus is at work on an experiment where subjects are told by a trusted family member that they were lost in a shopping mall when they were small. We convinced them that they were lost, that they were very unhappy, they were crying. We're seeing that people will adopt this suggestion. They'll elaborate upon it. Two weeks later, they are telling you exactly w where this happened. It was in front of the Hickory Farm store, and it looks exactly like a real memory. But why would people be like so willing to believe their own parents had abused them? I thought it was the only way I could get better. That's what the books said to, uh, you know, uncover more memories and more memories. Melody Gavigan and Lynn Gondolf call themselves retractors. They're part of a small but growing network of former patients who say their abuse memories were false, created by therapists who pressured them to imagine abuse. Did you have doubts? Yeah, and when you ask them, they've got a good answer for that, too. It's uh, normal, it's natural, it's denial. Why would anybody make up these memories if they weren't true? because it gives you a simple explanation for the pain that you're in. If you go to the right therapist at a right time in your life seeking an answer and believing the answers you're given, you're susceptible to this. This can happen to anybody. Not, it's not people who have, quote, problems. This can happen to anybody. You made me feel so ugly. Can we aren't saying me? abuse does not happen. Abuse oh, yes, does happen. We are saying our daughter, we did not abuse our daughter ever. Would, would not even think of abusing our children or anyone else's children. We love children. The reality is there's a lot of child abuse, a great deal of which is never discovered. And there are many therapists who give their patients appropriate treatment. But if therapists tolerate accusations that are false and families are torn apart in the process, then the fight against the injustice of child abuse may be creating another injustice in its wake. Kathy Slobogan, CNN, Special Assignment. And if you would like to write the Special Assignment staff, the address is Post Office Box 2727, Atlanta, Georgia, 30301.